My name is Justin, and I build my own speakers. This is the Dayton Audio PS95-8 3.5 inch point source driver and this is a fantastic 8 ohm speaker to get you started in speaker building. A couple of things about it that I really like. The first thing is it looks absolutely amazing with that copper phase plug. You can take a look at the at the customer photo gallery and see some of the wonderful things people have made with this particular speaker. It's just kind of hard to build something that looks bad when you're starting off with this nice driver with that beautiful phase plug. I want to take a look at the spec sheets here on this thing and show you something else I like about it a whole lot. Uh, first of all, notice the outside diameter is 98.2 millimeters and it's a PS95. So that 95 number is usually a pretty close approximation to uh, the outside diameter of the driver. A little tip if you ever wanted to know. Look at the frequency response. This thing down into the mid bass region, uh, up into the mid-range region is flat and not terribly loud. We're looking at less than 85 decibels, but flat, flat as can be. And it gets a little bit wonky above 1K, but still it barely drops below um, 80, 80 decibels. And the thing to notice is over here as we get up into the 20K region, uh, this thing is playing the treble and doing a really good job of playing the treble if you're on axis. It's, it's a little worse off axis, but actually the off axis sound is less severe in all its various ripples. So if you're sitting on axis, this thing's going to sound pretty good even without a crossover network. And here's one of the things you may not realize. A lot of speakers that you just go to the store and buy don't have any kind of crossover network in them, especially cheap speakers, boombox speakers, these kinds of things. And people buy these and people enjoy them get a lot of pleasure out of listening to music on, on an inexpensive speaker. So the idea of building a speaker without any kind of a crossover network is really appealing if you want to get into building speakers on your own, especially if you've never done it before, because you can literally just take this driver and put it in a box and try to make the box look nice and it'll play and it'll sound pretty good. Now there have been some YouTubers that have uh, built crossover networks to go with this thing and I'd refer you to, to them. I think Kirby Meets Audio is the one who, who put together a crossover network. But I think if you wanted to get started speaker building and you just wanted to buy something and put it in a box and say, hey, I did that, this is a great place to get started. So I recommend this driver and uh, I've done this very same thing with it and I'm going to show you what I've done. So I'm getting set up for my cut and what I've got is I've got a really messy, unorganized and probably unsafe setup because there's so many things you can stumble on while working. Uh, I have a, a, a cobalt table saw, which was uh, inexpensive and had a really good um, good specs and a good reach. It has a nice extension on it that allows it to cut uh, 30 inches. Um, got the um, dust collection system, to which I have added um, an air filter on a box fan to see if I can suck up some of that loose sawdust that flies around, keeps it keeps it from getting in our face. Uh, got the dust deputy over here. I will probably hook up my um, air hose here in a second so that I can blow off any dust that pops up on the table saw because it gets covered with dust when cutting MDF. Uh, back over here, I've got just a, you know, a, a hollow core door across a pair of saw horses uh, as, a, as a portable removable workstation. Safety first, right? Um, respirator, uh, air filter for the face, uh, hearing protection, eye protection. Got to have, got to have all the stuff. Uh, over here, I have my rolling uh, workstation and outfeed table that I've got set up off to the side of my table saw. If I ever rebuild that thing, I'm going to make a longer wing on it so that it can reach the table saw a little bit better. Uh, as you can see down here, it bumps up and won't go all the way to the table saw. Got some roller stands from Harbor Freight over there. Got a piece of uh, half-inch MDF. It's not a very good piece of half-inch MDF. It's a piece that I got at Lowe's. It was bundled up and I said, hey, if you'll knock a few bucks off of it. And so I got it for 12 bucks. And so I'm just going to have to trim off the ends and throw away some waste. And I got a, you know, three fourths of a sheet of MDF, you know, 80, 80%, 90% 90 of a sheet of MDF. It's workable just fine for half the price. Uh, after that gets done, we're going to cut some holes for speakers. And up there, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, there's um, 
some carbon fiber and right behind it is some veneer. So we're gonna slap some veneer on it um, and off we go. Unfortunately, I did not save the footage of the cutting and building process. So here's a picture of me with my respirator on and I'm going to um, do my Darth Vader impersonation. Oh, Luke, I'm your father. And we're gonna cut right to the process of veneering the speakers. So before I started filming, I used some spray adhesive. I think it may have been uh, Super 77. This is the stuff where you spray on both surfaces. It's contact cement and uh, you let it get dry. And after it dries, it will then stick to itself. Uh, I made a few mistakes, and if you listen to the video and you'll notice, you might hear and see some cracking as I bent around my roundover. Uh, going back in time, I would make my roundover a little bit more aggressive so that the curve would be a little bit larger. And, um, and I would have gone against the grain instead of with the grain. I had a little trouble lining this up and made a little mistake, and so I just took some veneer and just stuck it in there. Um, you know, getting a good piece cut was obviously harder than it looks. So I just stuck a piece of veneer on the part that I missed, and it's towards the, the back of the speaker and isn't really visible very much in the final product. Took some 220 grit sandpaper, gave it a light rubbing, and went around and made sure that the edges were neat and clean and smooth. Then I grabbed a knife and just uh, cut out the hole for the driver and the port. I'd already cut the hole in the MDF itself. This was just clearing out the veneer around the port. Uh, had If I had to do over again, I would have just used my router and circle jig to just do this here step at the end after I had the veneer in. The, the port is interesting. When I made the port, I just stacked together some one half inch MDF and just drilled right through it. So I calculated my port length and then you know, glued several pieces of MDF together and made a sandwich uh, along with the front baffle and then just drilled into it. I did use a drill to help clear out the veneer. I had a little trouble getting the veneer to clear out. And then I just took sandpaper and, and smoothed it all out. Pretty straightforward process. Uh, the sanding helped a whole lot. A little sandpaper can do a lot of good for making your projects look better. Before applying stain, I wiped on some pre-stain conditioner. I'm really excited about how nice these things look. That pre-stained conditioner put a nice sheen on them. Now we're gonna slap on some red mahogany stain and see how it turns out. I am very happy with the way these things turned out. I think they sound absolutely amazing. And it was a very simple build. It only took a couple of days here and there, cutting some wood, staining some veneer to put these together. This is a project that anyone could build. If you're interested in building your own, I'd be glad to share with you the details of the port and the box specifications. Just leave a comment below. 